Hi everyone, welcome. What you see here is the bin that used to be referred to as our outdoor worm bag version 4.0. And as of 12 days ago, the last time we checked in on it, it was bought inside in anticipation of a few days of very cold weather encroaching. And I just didn't want to see the system, you know, freeze over. I mean, for that matter, I didn't even want to see the temperature of this system cool down to the point where the worm activity slows down. I'd really prefer to see that the system remains nice and active with the worms comfortable. So I decided before winter really sets in, it was going to be, you know, in the best interest of the worms as well as just the productivity of the system in general to bring it inside and keep it in a warm spot. So it's now down here in my warmery. And I got to tell you, stark contrast to the type of weather I was expecting right before I bought this bag inside 12 days ago. I went to the home improvement store today and um, I was way overdressed. It was so warm today. I couldn't believe it. There was a guy I saw him walking into the store. He was wearing short pants, sandals, <laughs> totally like in a summer wardrobe. And then parked right next to me was a guy in a convertible Mustang with the top down. So it was a very, very unseasonably warm day today. And that wasn't really going to become reason enough for me to bring this bag back outside. I believe the the time has come just to let this system remain indoors. I was a little bit worried about possibly bringing in some sort of weird creatures that might have made themselves at home within this system over the time that the system spent outdoors. But, I don't know, I've kind of been taking my chances just leaving it out. And, um, I mean, so far I've seen no signs of anything weird, but then again, who knows? Something could have crawled out of here without me noticing it pretty easily. So whatever. I'm not worrying about it. <laughs> so now one thing we did notice, or I mean I guess it wasn't like something we had to notice. Something we've known for some time now because we've been really generous in this system. With um, huge quantities of bedding always getting added. Whether it was a huge quantity of weeds that I had just pulled or perhaps I had collected up a bunch of those little twirly maple seeds that fall off the trees. Maybe it was just a bunch of leaves. Since the, since the system was outside, I always felt like I had a, an abundant quantity of different types of bedding that we can put in here all the time. So I think the one thing that this system is not lacking by any means is any, um, any need for bedding, that's for sure. So my thought was just to come in here with some food today Give them a feeding. Last time we came in here, they received nothing other than coffee. Well, the coffee plus the coffee filters that the coffee had come in. It was three days worth of coffee, so it was three coffee filters plus um, plus the coffee. So I, um, I was prepared to do more or less the same thing today, except I only came down here with the coffee. This is my little transport container for bringing coffee down here. But I didn't want to be so boring with these little guys and give them only coffee so I've got some other stuff here I've got a uh, I've got some apple peels mostly apple peels but there's also a few larger chunks of apple I guess the apple was starting to get you know signs of bruising or whatever so that's going to be part of their feeding I got my worm chow here I thought perhaps we could even spice up the feeding with a little sprinkling of worm chow and I've even got my grit I mean, grit's not that big of a novelty in here because I did bring grit outside to feed these guys on numerous occasions. I would come down here into the wormery and prepare a little care package of grit for these guys. And the grit that I use is this uh, pulverized eggshell. Some people just use sand. Other people use pulverized crustacean shells. There's a variety of different things you can use as grit in your worm bins. My grid of choices, eggshell. So I um, I just was kind of curious to see how the drying had come along because when we bought this thing in, it had been raining for a day and a half or so prior to me bringing it in. And there was a pretty huge quantity of moisture. The whole system was pretty much sopping wet. But I'm not really getting the sense of that anymore here. I mean, it is a fabric container, so it does breathe quite a bit. So it, you know, dries pretty rapidly and readily. 
So I'm kind of glad to see that things are not overly wet, but it also kind of makes me wonder if I'm going to have to be mindful of not letting the system become overly dry because of the well-ventilated container. I'm kind of doing what I did last time, which is more or less tilling up the system all over the place. Just pulling up handfuls of material from all reaches of the container, trying to get a sense of how things are. I did sort of feel like I had done a similar sort of overview of the, the system by just exploring it all the way around and tilling it up all the way around. And it seemed like a good idea. I really want to get a sense of how this bedding material is progressing. Because if it does seem like they're going to burn through all this bedding too quickly, maybe I will begin adding bedding with the feedings. But until such a time that I really see a pretty good reduction of all this stuff that you see floating around, I think we'll stick to food only. And it does seem like a sound game plan. There is all kinds of stuff in here. There's um, leaves, there's weeds, there's probably still, still some more of those maple seeds floating around. And every now and then I bump into a, an old food item, like here's a, a corn cob. I guess just for novelty's sake, let's split it open and see what it looks like inside. It's a little bit dry. Maybe that's why it doesn't seem like it's got that much action, but there was a worm inside of it. Working the stuff down. Yeah, you know, I mean, if it does feel like things start to get a little bit dry in here, then we could always come in here with feedings that consist of, like, high moisture content foods. I mean, giving them coffee and a little bit of apple, that's not going to bring with it a great deal of moisture. But if I were to come in here with a bunch of frozen pumpkin, that pumpkin as it thaws would definitely let out a good bit of moisture. Possibly um, helping to compensate for the drying that the system seems to exhibit. So um, I guess the only place I don't really go too deep on tilling is the middle. I went kind of around the edges. I guess if we were to excavate right down the center, we will have more or less tilled up the entire system and checked it all out. It does seem like there's a good number of worms hanging out down there, right in the middle. And I guess, I don't know, maybe, maybe the other reason I'm being so curious and thorough in the inspection of the material is I'm just curious to see what other sort of creatures might have come in. You know, I'm, I guess what I'm looking for is maybe the larva of black soldier fly. It wouldn't be too surprising to find some of them. And then, you know, they would possibly sense the, the warming of the um, surrounding environment and then maybe, you know, resume their development and transformation into a fly. I don't think I saw any though, you know? I mean, if you spotted anything along the way that I might have missed, if I would have spotted it, I would have pointed it out and we would have talked about it. So, so far I've not yet seen any sort of insect larvae or anything of that sort, which is a good thing. That's kind of what I was hoping for. But I, um, you know, I accept the fact that I could have missed something there. So let's just drop in the feeding. I think we've been pretty thorough here, tilling up the material, checking it all out. And I think things look really good in here. I actually thought there was a lot more bedding. I thought there'd be a lot fewer castings, but it does seem like there's a lot of castings piling up in the system for sure. And the material is nice and granular, not really muddy. So it's, um, it's just fine, basically. Look at that. It doesn't even stick to my glove. So if it was any... If it was really muddy or overly damp, it would be sticking all over my gloves and it would be kind of a mess, but I'm not seeing that. So maybe it will be necessary at some point to figure out some way of guarding against excess drying. Or maybe just, you know, adding moisture if necessary. So, let's see. Let's sprinkle in a little bit of this pulverized eggshell as grit to go with that apple. Apple, you know... That's the sort of thing we're going to see leftovers of for weeks and weeks. Just the way apple is, very slow on the breakdown process. And then in with the coffee, I guess we could throw in some of this worm chow. 
that I bought over here for them as well. And I think that's pretty much everything that I had in mind for them today. Maybe we can even mix in a little bit more. It seems like the worm chow blended right in one, two, three. Perhaps a little bit more would be a nice welcome treat for them. Whole bunch of yummy bite-sized food right down the middle. Stuff that they'll probably eat pretty quickly, the, the coffee and the worm chow and other stuff like the apple, which might take a bit longer. I guess one thing I had thought about doing was maybe collecting up these sort of um, larger chunks of leftover food items, corn cobs and whatnot, and trying to um, keep it all together so we can include it down in the feeding area with the foods that we're adding. I don't know, maybe that's something we could do next time, but I think we're more or less done here. Very nice. It always does seem kind of cool to be able to like till this whole thing up and just check it all out and see how nicely everything looks in here. It's so much nicer than when it was really wet last time and it's kind of nice that in the last 12 days it dried out as nicely as it did. I'm just a little concerned. I don't want to see this stuff dry out any further. So I guess we'll probably be back in here in another 10 or 12 days to see how things are progressing. Hopefully we won't find things too dry but I think that the you know, the abundance of castings in this system already are probably enough to guard against excessive drying. Maybe we'll see some drying around the rim or the edges or up against the surface of the bag, but I'm sure down in the middle things are going to remain quite comfortable for the worms. And I believe this piece of plywood is going to do a good job guarding against evaporation too. So, all right, I think we're done here. So, if you, um, if you enjoyed the video, Please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always very much appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel too. That's very much appreciated as well. I'll take care of getting this stuff put away after we're off camera. <laughs> All right, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.